Good morning, Hank. It's Friday. So I just dropped Alice off and I said, Hey, Alice, do you mind if I wear this mask while I drop you off? And she said, um, maybe you could wear it later. I mean, there's embarrassing your kids and then there's embarrassing your kids. This has been one of the most popular pizza miss items along with this uh, three John pizza moon shirt. And I just, I just hope everyone knows what they're getting into. I can't do it anymore. Okay, I gotta go vote, but also we need to talk about the Rax guy. It is a phenomenally beautiful day in Indianapolis, by the way. So first thing, I just want to acknowledge that immediately after I made a video about why we're not trying to maximize views on Vlogbrothers anymore, you made a video that went to the front page of Reddit and got lots and lots of views. So Hank, Rax is a restaurant that hosts a huge percentage of our childhood. Like, it is so significant to my childhood that even now I can close my eyes and picture the exact layout of a... Well, I mean, that seems like an overreaction from my perspective. I can close my eyes and picture the exact layout of a Rax restaurant. Like, every Rax had this weird quasi-greenhouse that went off the side of it where you could, like, sit and feel like you were sort of outside. And even though there are only, like, five Rax restaurants left in America, there are still a lot of those buildings. It reminds me of one of my favorite Onion headlines. You can tell that local bank used to be a pizza hut. Well, I can tell when a restaurant used to be a Rax. So when we were growing up in Orlando in the 1980s, if you sat in that greenhouse part of our local racks, you could see a house. And in that house lived a person who we called the Racks Guy. And this house had all these hand-painted signs on the fence around it about how, like, the government was tyranny, but also, like, really weird conspiracy theories about, like, lizard people and stuff. And there was, like, an upside-down flag hanging from the flagpole, and it, it just did not look like the rest of Orlando. And the reason you and I have had so many conversations about the Racks Guy in the last ten years is that he was, like, the first Twitter user. He would post relatively short observations to his fence. And also, even even though I knew that lizard people didn't run the government, the Rax guy's worldview still, like, affected me. Hold on, I gotta go vote. All right, I have voted. I even got a sticker. Hey, if you're eligible to vote in the United States, I really hope that you will and that you make a plan to vote. If you need an accountability buddy to help make sure that you execute your voting plan, I also recommend doing that. I have an accountability buddy. It's my best friend, Chris. I just texted him to let him know that I voted. But right, about the Rax guy. So Hank, the very first obsessive experience I can remember having is this worry that everyone else on Earth wasn't a real person in the way I was that like they were these uh, aliens and they had very fancy human costumes that they wore when I was around and then when I wasn't around they went back to being aliens. This worry really tortured me when I was a kid for years. Now I want to be clear that the Rax guy did not cause me to have OCD. I was going to have it anyway. But the Rax guy did influence the particular worry that ended up taking over my life when I was seven and eight years old. That's it. That's the video. Our information feeds shape us. My information feed shaped me as a kid in 1985 going to racks on special occasions, and my information feed shapes me today. What you do with your attention is, in the end, what you do with your life. And so I gotta be careful what I pay attention to, because the stuff that's the loudest and the most outrageous is, for me at least, also often the stuff of nightmares. All that noted, I hope the Rax guy is doing all right. He's probably crushing it on the social internet, actually. There's never been a better time for Rax guys. Hank, I'll see you on Monday.